Welcome back, everybody, to the Made Over Podcast. I am your host, Mrs. Made Over. So welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Um, so as you see, guys, you have me again. I am still here <laughs> because if you have not um, watched our podcast from last week, um, Mr. Made Over, my better half, my hubby, my boo, my bae, he is actually still on sabbatical for the rest of the month. So you get my beautiful face. Today's um, topic so t- will delve a little bit more deeper based on the independent woman. Okay. So the independent woman of this. Um, oftentimes as women, we get so caught up in just the day-to-day routines. Um, some of us are moms, some of us are daughters, some of us are, are, um, you know, we are employers, we are caretakers, we are caregivers, um, and we're doing all these things. So it brought me to a thing of, man, but outside of what we do behind scenes that we don't really want people to see, how do we portray that outward? thing you know because I know sometimes I come home and I want to be comfortable I don't want to always just be or when I'm lounging I want to be comfortable I don't want to be dressed up head to toe every day all day that's just I mean it's not realistic so in our society today though things have I want to say they've changed over time I recall there being a time where um we would, you know, be comfortable. We were t-shirt, jeans, sneakers, boom, or tennis shoes, whatever you guys call them. Um, and that would be it. We were okay and we were comfortable in our own skin. So now let's fast forward. And this was, you know, like I said, in my day back, you know, earlier on. Um, but then I fast forward to how technology has taken our world or taken society and it has advanced. So today, uh, it seems like technology, of course, has taken over because that's just how the modernization of um, our society has grown. And so we are now involved heavily, heavily in a technological world, basically being everything that we do has to deal with the internet, has to do any some some things with some type of social media, worldwide web, somewhere, somehow. And so with all of that, I wanted to delve into how we evolve from being behind closed doors in our personal homes to our outward appearance or the persona or mask or whatever you want to call it that you put on for others that are in this world of technology. What do we do when we are putting on a show? So you go, well, Ms. Mo, what you talking about? Well, let me tell you. Okay, so I remember being a teenager. I remember being, you know, in my 20s and... There were certain things that I did in those times. Um, As I told you before, I could only talk about me and my experiences. So I remember, you know, the cheesy little pictures, you know, you know, batting my eyelashes, Hmm. Uh, you know, sitting on the countertop in the bathroom, posted up in the mirror, trying to get the best angle um, for my, for my drivers, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, when you sit on the counter in the bathroom, the bathroom usually has the best lighting. I got to get that perfect angle so that I can take that shot that is going to get the most likes. I can take that shot and know that the position of the camera, the position of my body will generate some attention some type of attention. And it does not matter at that point in time if that attention is going to be negative or if it's going to be positive. So I was sitting up here and I'm thinking like, yo, why do we do that? Why are we as women 
because this is Women History Month. Remember, I told y'all that. So why are we as women, why do we put on such a big show? Why do we put on such a big facade for people outside of our homes? We want people to understand us. We want people to understand us. We want people to understand us. So how are we supposed to get a clear understanding of you, my dear, if... You never show us the true side of you. You never show us the true essence of who you actually are. So how do we go from the things that we see in media? And it's only now been magnified. So like the pictures that I remember taking, you know, in little bare nothing to what I am seeing now, the sex appeal of women has heightened. Basically what I mean is you all know that the more skin you show, that tends to sell. That tends to draw the attention. But then what happens to how you feel? Are you really getting some type of gratification from posting with the duck lip? Mm, mm. Are you really getting some gratification for tooting it up in the mirror to snap a picture or the newest trend that I'm seeing y'all. I I can't knock. Well, yeah, I'm gonna knock it. The the newest trend is all it is booty popping because that's what we call it. Y'all call it twerking now. Back when I was younger, it was booty popping. So all of this booty popping, twerking, all of this is now what has been magnified. That is what the attention is now being focused. That's the focal point. When it comes down to a woman, I remember seeing the videos and like, oh no. And you know, back in the day, we called them video vixens. I don't know what they call them now. I don't know if it's still the same, but I remember saying, oh man, like, look at her. Look at what she's doing. But I never wanted to do that. Like that was not something that I want to do. So now we fast forward to 2021 present day. Society says that everybody now got to do these TikTok dances where you popping your bottoms or you twerking your bottoms, you're dropping it more like than it's hot. And so, but why? All for a simple like, all for two point whatever K views. But what do you do when you turn that off? Who are you when you turn that off? And then the crazy part is this. The crazy part is I'm not just seeing the younger generation, the Gen Zers or the millennials. I am now seeing like older women. Boo, sweetheart, okay? What are you saying? If you are somebody's mama, okay, I'm, I'm going to go there. That's like my mama being on TikTok or being on IG because she posted a TikTok video and sh- she popping. What? Lady, you got a daughter and two grandkids. Sit down somewhere. But no, we are hyping up these individuals because every time we watch it, every time we uh like it it is doing nothing but boosting their heads up on the outside of things on the social media aspect of things but on the inside some has anybody ever thought like ooh what's going on why why are they doing this why is this older woman resulting to doing this oh and then let me tell y'all the part that really gets me <laughs> this part I was like what y'all crazy now all right it is foolishness The mamas and the daughters are doing these dances. Sit your body, yaddy, yaddy down somewhere. Because you that's that's not the story that you should be teaching your child. Because then your grandchild coming up trying to body, yaddy, yaddy. And then you're going to be looking like, "Uh," so you're going to now dance with your child and then your grandchild. So what story are you shedding? or sharing with your child and then your child seed. It it just does not make any sense. So I thought about it. I'm like, okay, Miss Mo, now you know 
that you used to do, you know, it wasn't body yada, it was other it was other songs. Um, you know, you used to take the pictures. Guilty. I did I took the 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 I, I really didn't like the duck lip. The duck lip just not mm, that mm, that ain't cute. So I did the side smirk. I did the the smize. Ooh, yeah. Mm. I did the let me find the correct angle. You know, my my drivers, when you're in the car and you know the light is hitting you really good and you gotta get that that camera shot as you're sitting at the stop sign or in the parking lot or the sunlight is just right when you sitting, you know, waiting on y- your kids to come out of the, the school building. But we're doing all that to post it to get a like. But then what happens when you don't get the likes? But the other person that you see has all the likes. Now it's like, what do I do? So now I got to go back and I got to strategize, right? Because this is really what we do. And and I know I did it. So I don't know if y'all are going to admit to it or you're going to tell yourself, you know, you don't have to tell me. You don't have to jump in, you know, our DMs or comment that this is something that you did because I'm letting you know this is what I did is I took the picture and then if I didn't get the likes that I wanted, I needed to take a different picture. Or I might have needed to do a collage from the side. I'm going to pose from the side because I can show, you know, my whole figure. I'm going to pose, you know, this way. With, you know, maybe put a little extra gloss to make my lips look a little bit more puckered. But what are we doing? What are we telling people? What signs are we giving off? Are we truly doing this for you know, a like, or is there something that is deep down inside of us that is wrong that we do not want to share with anybody that is causing us to want to hide it, to make it look like something is going good for us. But that's not always the case because a lot of times, and I'm speaking again for self, a lot of times we do these pictures and this silly stuff because deep down inside, we've been hurt by somebody, some some man, somebody told us some negative stuff about ourselves. I know I had low self-esteem and, dep- uh, and depression and body image issues. So when I was a certain size, I would post more than not. When I was a certain size, I would dress a certain way because that would draw some type of attention. Sometimes it was unwanted attention. Sometimes it's like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm older now. I got two daughters. So why 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 do I need to wear a shirt that show all of my chichis? Why? Why do I need to wear shorts and my palms are hanging and it's just hanging? <laughs> Cover it up. If you got the body, okay, flaunt it. But don't flaunt it for the unwanted attention. Don't flaunt it because you're trying to make old girl over there jealous and then trying to see if you can, you know, one up her and get more likes. Don't flaunt it because, you know, old dude over over there is trying to, you know, he watching you. Flaunt it for other reasons. You don't have to show your entire figure or your whole body or flesh in order for you to be appealing to somebody, in order for you to be attracted to someone. What happened to, let me be the real, true, uncut me without all the extra stuff. What happened to that? We we want to fake the funk. We've been trying to fake the funk for so long. You know, let's go along, let's get along, let's let's do what everybody's doing. Society says that we need to have this, that, and the other. And if we're not, then we just, you know, whoop de whoop. We're we're just lame. You know, we don't mean anything. What? Lies. Lies, all of it. All you have to do is be your true self. Now Is that something that takes place overnight? Mm -mm, No way. 
It took me years to overcome the battles of the low self-esteem, the depression, the body issues, the negative self-talk, the negative talk I heard from other people. So this wasn't a thing of, okay, Mrs. Mo, so overnight you just flipped the script and you just decided like, oh, you good. No, I did not. But what I did do is I took step by step by step. And I realized, okay, one, I'm a woman of God. Two, I'm a mama. No, well, actually, I'm a wife first. Then I have not only two girls, but then I have three bonus boys as well. So that's five kids that I'm mothering and that are looking up to me. So for my sons, I need to be the godly woman. They don't need to see me posting on IG or doing foolishness on IG as stepmom or Mrs. Mo. They don't need to see that. My daughters don't need to see mommy booty popping on on on, on social media. She don't need to see me body yada yada on social media. Now, she will see me doing, you know, hip hop dancing, step aerobics, you know, that type of stuff. But then there's a difference. But you're not going to see me posting a full workout routine. And then at the end of my workout routine, I'm going I'm to put on a show. And I mean, you know, some of y'all, you, your bodies are nice. But do you have to add that extra? Do you have to go that extra mile? Because the last time I checked, y'all, working out, you know, it entails sweat. But some of the stuff that I'm seeing now is, yeah, it's too far. It's too much. <laughs> that's the that's the censored and watered down. It's too much. Because... We have our Gen Zers. We have our children and our some of you all that are grandparents. You have your grandchildren that are watching these things and you aren't concerned and you aren't monitoring the things that they see. So when they tend to see others doing these things, they think it's okay. And then you're not in the rightful position to be able to tell them, no, baby, you can't do that. No, baby, you shouldn't do that. No, baby, that's not how we carry ourselves. We're we're young ladies. We tell our daughters every day, you are a princess. Every day. Your princess, whether you wear your, your princess dresses around the house or whatnot. But at all times, you should carry yourself as a princess. Princesses don't do certain stuff. They with they uphold themselves with dignity and with class. And it's not always about the outside of things. But society has warped us. So if we don't teach our children now, or if we don't catch the generation that is slowly being sucked in, then we're going to have a world of women who think that everything on the outside is all that matters. But what about if I'm super smart? What about if I can, you know, I can problem solve very well? What about if my mind is so artistic and I'm able to create and, and, you know, and, and, and do things with my hands? Or what if, you know, I'm an an artist and I'm painting because these images automatically just come to my head? What if I can, crunch numbers so well that, you know, I'm crunching these big numbers and it's in my head. What about that? What about I'm such a super organizer that my whole house is running super smooth? Do we not want to focus on the positives of things that are going on that may be hidden, that may be internal that people don't see? What if my heart, what if I'm just kind hearted and, you know, I'm selfless? What about those things? You can't see my heart. You can maybe feel my love, but I can't take this heart out and show you that it is good. But if I am, if some of you all saw me and I'm like, you know, I'm a woman of God, I'm, I'm this, 
I'm that. But then you saw me indulging in the same things that I'm telling you that we should not be doing. That wouldn't look good, even as a as a as a teacher. So not only am I I'm a parent, but then I have a hundred and some odd students that also watch what I do. So what type of role model is that if I am around here doing things that I'm telling them not to do? Pot calling the kettle black. Don't do that. You're not supposed to do that. You shouldn't do that. That's not nice. That's not good to do. But then they flip through your teacher Instagram account and and that's and you doing the exact thing you told them they should not do. Hypocritical. Don't don't find yourself in that moment. Figure out what is deep down inside of you that is causing you to do these things. Like I said for me, it was the neck it was negativity. It was, you know, it was just so much history. We did a podcast on um who am I? What made me be the person that I am? Who I have become? How did I get here? I, I didn't wear, you know, stuff all up to my neck. You know, my drivers, I got like this little, not a little mock neck, but it comes up a little bit, little dress, you know, and I got my cardigan on. No, I did not always do that. You could always probably find me in a halter top or two top in the summer times, some type of dress, short skirt. That's that's what I wore, but my body type permitted it. But I was still doing it for a wrong reason. Because I was doing it thinking that it will make me feel beautiful, that it will make me feel cute. It didn't. It didn't because then I had to keep up with the body image of like, okay, I can't wear that skirt because I look a little, you know, ooh, that's a little jiggly right there. Now I'm like, man, let me throw on, you know, my arms, they jiggle a little bit, but I'm a mama and I'm a wife. I eat good. My husband feeds me good, y'all. Good stuff. (laughs) I eat. We foodies. So I'm going to have a little jiggle, just a little bit, but I guarantee you he's, he's also getting me right on, you know, but I don't have the urge to want to dress in a provocative manner now those of us that are shapely us curvy women we just some, some we just can't help it so we just can't help it you curvy young ladies that are out there that you can still dress cute but you just got to be mindful of what message you're trying to bring across and then why I always say, if you stand in the mirror and you got to, I don't know if this is, uh, that might not, uh, yeah, that might not work. Oh, wait, that's cute. And if I'm tugging, uh, I don't know how many ladies out here, you know, you guys tug on your clothes. I'm a tugger. Um, I'm a, I got to pull it from the side, the back, cover the, you know, cover my, my baby fat right here in my midsection. So I'm a tugger on, on, I have on a cardigan right now, my riders, and, you know, I'm trying to keep from just pulling on it because I just want to make sure that, you know, it fits right. It falls right because I'm very, you know, mindful of the message that I want to bring across. I don't need to wear a midriff top on a podcast. Why? For what? Yeah, it's burning up in here with me, but I, I don't need to do that. I could just flip the fan on. So we do all of these things. And we say that it makes us feel better. We do all of these things and then society says we fit in. It's almost like a cookie cutter image, right? Um, How many of you have, you know, written in neighborhoods or rode through neighborhoods and it's those cookie cutter homes. All the homes, they look the same, same, same shape, same, same size. Some of them have the same colors. Society is out here trying to make us into a cookie cutter cutter society all of us women we got to have our lashes we got to have our makeup oh my goodness I don't do makeup I don't it's just not my thing take too much time but we got to have a full face contour right blush right lip 
you know, we got to have a dramatic eye depending on what event we're going to. Now, you know, we've gone from strip lashes to now we got magnetic lashes because they, you know, you could just, they just stick, stick to your, your eyelash. You know, I, I don't need nothing that's going to just zoop. Yeah, I don't want a magnet. Um, But there's no, you know, you ladies that wear your magnetic lashes, power to you. Um, Yeah strip i'm a strip lash girl been putting them on since you know i was a teenager that's that's my thing i could just snatch them off if i wanted to so if society is saying all these things oh now and then you know it's cool to wear glasses you got to get your blue light glasses especially if you're a gen z or because that's the cool thing now even if you don't need to wear glasses but you still need to get you some blue light glasses because that's just what's in Society is saying too much. Society is dictating too much of what we're supposed to do and who we're supposed to be. What about the morals and values that have been dropped down into us, passed down from generation to generation? What about even if it was bad advice and, and the morals and values just did not stick? Do you have any that you can create be, from someone or not create, but do you have someone that you can look up to? that can be a mentor or that is a role model that says, baby, you don't have to do this. Everybody want to wear a wig, a unit. Everybody's wearing lashes. Everybody's wearing makeup. Everybody's finding the biggest hoop earrings they can find. Everybody has to wear their body con dresses and the body con dresses ain't for everybody. Everybody got frayed and cut up jeans. Guess what? I don't want to spend 30 40 $50 on a pair of jeans when I can go in the closet and get a pair of old ones and just get a razor blade and just cut my jeans up myself. Why? Because society is is saying that in order for us women to be somebody to stand out in a male dominated world, that we have to live up to a certain standard. And sometimes that means demoralizing ourselves and devaluing ourselves. So when do we step out of that? Or how do we step out of that, Miss Mo? Because I, I just don't know what to do. Well, first you need to find out what is causing you to want to throw on a unit every single day. Yes, I love my units. Yes, I have several of them in the top of my closet because I just don't feel like doing my hair. But it's not because I'm trying to please somebody. Yes, I wear my units and I got, a, I got enough to wear one, a different one every day of the week. And units, some people call them wigs. But yes, I do. I have a lot of them. But my reasoning behind them is not because society said that this is what everybody's wearing. Mrs. Mo just has three heads to do. And it's just a lot, especially when everybody got thick hair around here. I just don't have the time to sit down and try to do three heads in, in one weekend when I'm busy. But the moment that I start wearing these units because society said that I got to have this one and that one and that one and society said I need to dress like this and society says I need to act like this and society says I need to care. Ugh. Forget society. It's time to step up and it's time to be an individual. I promise you, you'll go far. People may not like it, but guess what? There will be some people who you will impact and you all won't look the same. Don't be a cookie cutter person when you have morals and values. You have beliefs. You have tools that are inside of you that have been deposited in you. But are you going to use them or are you going to just let them fall by the wayside? Because society said as a woman, this is what we should look like. When most of the people that we see on ads and TVs and billboards, they've been painted and airbrushed and all of these other things. I'm not finna take a skinny tea. I don't care how many people it help. I don't want to drink, you know, and and uh, I don't want to do a, a, a supplement peel that's going to make my stomach shrink. I don't want to go out and get tummy tucks and Botox. And like I said, you ladies that do this, that is your, that's your prerogative. I am not knocking you. But what I'm saying is for me as an individual, I don't need those things to make me who I am. I don't need those things to make me feel accepted or wanted or beautiful or important because I am all of those things regardless of what society says. Where do, where do we go from here? What do we do? How do we figure out the self-love and the self-worth or how they say beauty, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. 
beauty is within. Okay, but why are we not showing what's within? Because all the beauty got to come from the outside. I got to get the longest inches. I got to get braids down to my bottom. I got to get the straightest hair. I don't care. I need inches upon inches upon inches of hair. No, I don't because mm -mm, it's too hot. I'm in Georgia and I sweat. Nah, I don't want, I don't, I don't, I don't want all that hair. I don't need hair down. Mm -mm. No, I'm not a model. I'm not somebody, one of the women on TV when they come out the pool and they hair, you know, their hair so wet and you go, huh? <laughs> my drivers, I wish, <laughs> my drivers, you know, y'all. You know, you y'all know them commercials. Think about Fabio, okay? This is old school. Remember Fabio used to get in the pool with his own hair? He come out the water, he sling it back because it's wet. I don't need no hair that long. It is too, it is hot, jur jur, and it is too hot for me to be having all that hair on my head. It's too hot. I don't, and one, I ain't even finna get in no pool like that. I might dip my feet. I ain't even, mm -mm. and it ain't got nothing to do with me not wanting to get my hair wet because I don't have a problem with that. I'm natural and the water and the rain don't scare me. Trust me. Put some water on this stuff. It's just going to curl up. I'll be good to go with the unit or with my real hair. It don't matter. It can just rain. It's fine. But if we don't understand and we don't grasp what society is trying to do and what they're trying to dictate within the women what uh what is that block not blockbuster Ooh, i'm aging myself what um ho uh hollywood sorry what hollywood is trying to portray what they're trying to make the the women to be people always well mr mo my husband would always be fascinated because i'm just not a starstruck person stars just don't phase me they're just people, y'all. They people that just got a little bit more money than we do. And they got some people might, you know, a little team of people that help them put themselves together. But they go through the same issues that we go through every single day. They can get made up, dressed up, put on thousands of dollars of jewelry, have chefs and stylists and makeup artists and all of this stuff, and then still not be happy. We see it all the time in the news. So if they are doing what we're trying to do and we're normal and they're normal too, just with some more money, then we haven't realized what society is doing. We haven't realized what Hollywood is trying to do to us. All they're doing is breaking you down. They're not building you up. And if it is, please tell me what the secret is and how it's building you up. Cause I'm very curious to know. So you can drop a comment or slide in the DM and I'll be sure to respond because I really would like to know how is it boosting you? How is what society is dictating your life to be? How is that beneficial? How does that make you beautiful? I'm not trying to like be a hundred and, and, 15 pounds in a size four or six anymore. Cause you can see my collarbones. I was able to put my hands down there. I, I don't want to be that little. I told y'all I like food. I like to eat. So I'm going to have some meat on my bones. Society. I don't care what they say. They can say my little five, three self X amount of pounds, overweight, overweight. Uh, I don't care. I'm happy. And I like, I, I'm going to keep telling you, I like food. So no, I don't want to be a size four or a size six. I'm cool in a 10, 12 right there. I'm fine being curvy. I just, you know, we got to get to that point where we're just okay. We got to be comfortable. I'm not going to look at my girl and be like, man, you know, because we like, man, these skinny girls, eh, forget them. Skinny girls, you go right ahead, honey, because whatever you're doing is working because you eat. I got a friend, she eat everything, every, all the time, all day. My child, all day, every day, and still slim. Me, I eat, I'm going to put on some, I'm, yeah, it's going. you're going to see it. But if we compare ourselves, because that's all society is doing, it's just creating a world of competition and comparison. We're comparing ourselves to Hollywood stars. Like I said, they ain't nothing but simple people, y'all. I done met enough of them to know. The ones on TV, the singers, the, whatever you want to call I've met them, met several. And I'm just not fascinated 
they just don't tickle my fancy because I'm not going to get all gung ho and yeah, yes. Oh my God. I can't believe. No. There are normal people like me. They, their name is just in the media. They just have the spotlight, which I don't want that kind of light on me. Because if you notice when that light is on you, when you're expected to exude some type of societal standard and you don't live up to it, what is society going to do? Drag you. Think about it. Too many people been in, in the news where they were on top one day and the next day they at the bottom. So society is putting them on that little pedestal and they'll snatch them down and drag them through the mud. Nah, I'm good. I don't want to be on no pedestal and I can drag myself through the mud if I felt like it. I don't want to do all that. So how do we how do we build self-love and, and the beauty within? So, of course, y'all know how we do on, on, on the podcast. We pull out a little scripture every now and then. So as I was thinking about this topic, I'm like, okay, all we're doing is trying to find a way to feel beautiful, to feel self-love, to feel self-worth. So Lord, how do, how do I get to that point? How do I help others get to that point? Because it's not an overnight task that, you know, I can... Check, it ain't, it's not even a block checker. You can't check the block on this one. We check the block so much or check the box so much that we can't keep checking the box on what society is deeming as beautiful or what society is deeming as self-love or self-worth. Because it, all it is, is it, it's breaking us more and more inside. We're so broken inside that we just don't know what to do. Because we're trying to live in this cookie cutter society and trying to do everything that society does so we can get society's approval. Forget society. Go against the grain. It is the only way to do it. You do not have to follow the masses. Be your own leader. And I guarantee you, you do it right. You're going to have you some followers that are going to also do it right. So. Uh, First Peter three, uh, chapter three, verse three and four. It says, don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourself instead with the beauty that comes from within the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. This is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. They put their trust in God and accepted the authorities of their husbands. For instance, Sarah obeyed her husband Abraham and called him her master. You are do- you are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husbands must uh might do. So This is telling me that I should not be concerned with my outward beauty. What? But I like to be cute and I need to, I need to wear makeup because, you know, I got these spots on my face or, you know, I ate too much chocolate and I got these dark blemishes or I have nervous habits and anxiety. So I pick at my face and I pick at my acne and I just have so much going on. So I need to wear this makeup. No, that's your outward, be- your outward beauty. You don't have to be concerned with that. My fancy hairstyles. No, I got to go get my hair done because, you know, these braids cost 200. I don't know how much they are now. But then I need to go get this unit because this unit is 325. I want it. It's cute, but I can't pay 325. So guess what? I'm going to keep my money in my pocket. Okay, because it told me not to be worried about fancy hairstyles. I remember we used to do finger waves, $35. What? Yes, I wore finger waves. We used to do microwave ponytails. What's that? <laughs> if you know what a microwave ponytail is, please make sure that you uh drop something in the comment. But a microwave ponytail, you go get you some um uh bundles of hair or tracks. You roll them up with you put you some setting lotion on them. You get those hard rollers or those um what were those rollers? The um sponge rollers. Roll it up real tight. 
pop that guy in the microwave, take it out, put it on your head, and you got your ponytail, curly hair. Microwave ponytail. Set it and go. Simple. But I shouldn't be concerned with that. Even with expensive jewelry. Well, if he proposed to me, he need to have a big old ring because I want this. Girl, for what? Because if you get pregnant, your finger going to swell up and you're going to have to take them off anyway. Or they be like mine and like they stuck. They can't even come off because my fingers are swollen. What I want, no, just let me go to Target and let me just find me some five ninety nine earrings. I don't need nothing expensive. Because who, again, what are what is our focus on? Our focus is on the outer beauty because society says the outside is more important than the inside. Whereas the Bible is telling me what is on my inside is what's more important. So that cancels out what society is saying. Because God, I'm sorry, is in control. Society, well, no, this is where you choose, okay? God is not going to force you to choose his side, but he's telling you and then told you that the best thing to do is to choose life. So that means you need to come over on his side. But in the instance that you choose society and the world of things, know that you're going to be caught up in the outward beauty. You're going to be caught up in the hot hairstyles. You're going to be caught up in the fancy jewelry. For what? Then what What benefit do you get from that? What validation are you getting? Are you even being validated? It says, or the beautiful clothes. I am not about to go and buy cut up jeans for $40, $50, $60 when I can go in my closet and cut them up myself. Why? We are so caught up because society says we got to shop in these places look like this. But our spirit, our spirit should be quiet. I don't need to walk in. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm going to say this. I don't need to walk in with uh, butterfly eyelashes. <laughs> Woo. I don't need that. Give me some natural ones. Matter of fact, I could just get some mascara too. I I don't need a, I don't need eyelashes that if I take them off and they drop on the floor, I think it's a bug because it's so big. I don't need that. Why are we having to do that? Why do why 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 do we have to have such big eyelashes? Why do we have to have so much makeup caked on our faces. Why can't we show our natural skin and our natural beauty? Why is our flesh being so loud? Because we're we're walking with the world. We're walking with society. We want to be a part of that cookie cutter mold that they have made. But it's telling me right here in First Peter that it needs to be, I need to have a gentle, quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. Who are you trying to please? Man, society, and devil? Or are you trying to please God? Because the louder you are, you already know who you please. I, I don't even have to tell you. You already know what side you're on. I don't have to tell you. The women that from that were of the old or women of old, they made themselves Beautiful by putting their trust in God. That's basically that. That's all. I, I don't even need to explain that. They made themselves beautiful. They put them their trust. So even though society says that in order for a woman to be a chemist or a woman to be an engineer, they got to do A, B, C, and D. They got to look like this or they're not worthy or they can't do this. If you don't go to this school or if you're not this smart, if you didn't do this type of research, if you didn't do that type of research, if you don't carry yourself this way, if your parents don't have money, if you don't come from a background of wealth. <sighs> Society is dictating so much of what we do to where it is just beyond sad. But if I put myself in or put my trust and place myself too in God's hand, but put my trust in him, I'm going to be beautiful. 
regardless. Because I'm not mirroring society. I am mirroring the image of God. I'm looking like him. I look like my daddy. The light that he shows, I should also show. It should also radiate through me. Then for those that are married or seeking to be married, it also says they accepted the authority of their husbands. A profound thing I thought of today is with this podcast and and my husband's uh, sabbatical for the entire month, Jesus, um, I was nervous because I'm like, I got to do it by myself. I got to edit. I got to post. I got to and teach and be a mama and be a wife and and find self-care time and do. Why am I? I can't. You, what you mean I got to do it by myself? Babe? I can't do it by myself. Yes, yes, I can. So I had to look at it like my husband has been giving a set of instructions by our father. Then because my husband is the head of my household or our household, he provided a set of instructions to me as his wife. When it came down to certain things, as far as the podcast, when it comes to certain things around the house, I had to learn how to submit myself under my husband. I had to accept his role and the authority figure of his presence in our house. But I did that confidently because I know that my husband is listening to the father. But the moment that I don't accept this authority, I, I'm not beautiful. What? So you trying to tell me if I'm married and I ain't accepting my husband's authority, I'm ugly. Yup, you are. Because I know you walking around here being independent. I know you think you're supposed to get his whole paycheck, but you're not. The man has to take care of the house. We are to subject ourselves to our husbands. Those of you that are willing and wanting to be married, this is one of the steps because it tells us right here. This is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. They put their trust in God and they accepted the authority of their husbands. Authority. That means like he over me. Yes, that's what it means. It does. He's over you. He's your covering as well. He's the set man of your house. Yes, submit yourselves. We've seen that before in the Bible as well. Some ladies, submit your wives, submit yourself to your husbands. I got to do all that just to be beautiful. What you mean all that? That, that? that wasn't even a whole lot. It just told me what I need to not be concerned with. But then you talking about this is a lot in the Bible. When you take two hours to put your makeup on, then you got to take another hour and a half to get your hair right. Then you got to go spend the money on the outfit and spend the money on the, the new unit that you want. And then you got to have the best of the best of the best shoes. I don't even know it's Louis Vuitton still hot, but it might be Steve Madden's that you want. Okay. If you in the winter and you live in the snow area, it might be Uggs. Whatever your thing is. This is what we have to start to come. This is what we have to come to grips with as women. The outer appearance is not what matters. The more that we allow the world that we are in, the society that we are in, dictate what we are supposed to look like, how we are supposed to act, what we're supposed to do. That is the moment that we continue to crumble and we continue to be subject to the world. But the moment we do the, the simplistic thing that has already been outlined for us, which is telling us how to be beautiful, it is telling us what to do, what we don't need to be concerned about. There are bigger things to be concerned about. Why well, need to be worried about if if this this foundation fit? I ain't got time to be sitting around with foundation. They already told me sometimes it's going to take, depending on the brand, I might need two different kinds. I don't have time to be trying to figure out which ones. I don't, if I don't feel like putting on no lashes, I'm not going to put none on. So wh what are you going to do, women? What do, what do we do? We bind together. We 
devote our time to studying our word. We put our trust in God. We stop being concerned with the outwardly opinion, the outwardly look. It is not something that is super easy. And I keep telling you this because it's not easy. It is something that is very challenging and it is something that will push you. But if you want to feel beauty within, if you want to start overcoming those things that you may have dealt with in the past, then you have to take the first step of acknowledging, oh man, I'm, I'm too concerned with, you know, the outward opinion. Oh man, I'm just too concerned with this jewelry right here. You know, I'm just too concerned with it. You know, I'm so concerned with, you know, the jewelry. And for my my followers, I'm I'm taking off my earrings and taking off my my Galaxy watch. That's my Galaxy watch is probably the only expensive piece of jewelry I have outside of, you know, yeah. I took that off. I, I'm, I'm too caught up in my, my wedding bands. I'm so concerned with, with, with a piece of jewelry. So let me remove that. Oh my goodness. I got this beautiful, uh, wavy. I don't know how many inches. It might be 16, 18 inches. I have no idea how many inches this is, but, but Peter, first Peter tells me that, I shouldn't be concerned with, you know, fancy hairstyles. Okay, well, let me go ahead and take my headband off because first Peter is telling me that, you know, I can't be concerned with, you know, let me pop my combs out of my unit that I have on right now. Ouch. Okay. Yeah, popping that off because Peter just said my fancy hairstyle. Y'all, these combs in here real tight because I don't have this thing on here all day. But it's telling me, don't be concerned with that. Oh my goodness, y'all. She just took her whole unit off on podcast. I sure did. Because first Peter just told me, and yeah, I got my stocking cap on. First Peter just said, don't be concerned with my fancy hairstyle. So, okay. So I, I can't be concerned with, with that. And then it tells me that I shouldn't be concerned with, oh, my beautiful clothes. Let me go ahead and take this cardigan off because if it was a real day, then I would put my robe on because I like to be comfortable in my house. So let me just do that because I'm not concerned with what society is going to say that Mrs. Mo just put on her robe and she took her unit off on the podcast because, you know, it is bedtime. And so I'm not concerned that I'm going to put on my bonnet because this is how I am. I'm not trying to get a like from anybody. I'm not trying to get an acceptance from anybody. Oh, but but wait a minute. My beauty comes from within. Oh, wait, I did put on a little, you know, powder for y'all. So let me just wipe that off and take this lipstick off because my baby told me I need to put some lipstick on. So let me just wipe all this off. Oh, wait, hold on. That there's I got eyelashes on too, y'all, because I'm not supposed to be, you know, super concerned with what my outward beauty is. So let me just. You know, take my little art, you know, I got my little lashes on, my little strip lashes. Let me not be concerned with that. And let me just get all this extra stuff off my face because society does not dictate what I'm supposed to look like. Society does not tell me who I'm supposed to be. They don't tell me that my I'm not beautiful. You can't tell me that I'm not cute still with my little leopard bonnet on and my blue plush robe. Society doesn't tell me that. Society is not going to tell you that. Fix my bonnet for y'all. Society is not going to tell you that. Society is going to tell you that you must wear the the fancy jewelry, the earrings and the rings and the eyelashes and the makeup and the the eyeliner and the lipstick and the mascara and the the super butterfly magnetic lashes and the long fingernails and and the heels that are too high where you can't even walk to where your feet start hurting. You got to wear the tightest of the tightest of the tightest clothes. You do not. You are not a cookie cutter person. You have been set aside. You have been set apart to where now 
It is time for you to examine yourself to determine why is it that you feel like every day you roll out the bed, you got to wake up two hours earlier. Oh, wait, never mind. Most of y'all put your makeup on in the car while you're driving in the morning, which you shouldn't be doing because that's called distracted driving. But I'm not a police officer, but that's what you do. You do all of this because I got to get the likes. And the likes can be a click on your social media account or it can simply be somebody telling you, oh, you cute today. Oh, you're so gorgeous. Oh, well, thank you. But what if what if it's is I'm at home and people don't see this and I don't want social media to see me, you know, laid back, snuggled up in my, my plush robe with my bonnet on with no makeup on with my, you know, my little blotches on my face. We don't want people to see that, but that is the very beauty within that people need to see. And it starts one woman at a time. I challenge you as Women's History Month, the end of it is slowly approaching, but I think I got like stuff back here, but I challenge you to be like me. I'm the first. I will be the first. I will be the model for you all. Take off the fakeness of the hair, the makeup, the lashes, the whole kit and caboodle, and allow the beauty from within to show. Because it's about our gentle and our quiet spirit. Because that is what's so precious to our father. He doesn't need us to go out and make a bold statement by what we're wearing and how we're strutting it down the hallway, the road, the street, the whatever you're strutting it down. He can care less about that. My women, I ask that you take the time out to do a deep self-check, self-reflection to determine why every day you must wake up and do the things that society has said it's normal or what society has said you must do to fit in. Figure out the why behind it. You can wear as much makeup as you want to. You can put on as big of a lashes and big of a earrings and big of a hair as you want to. But if you're a mess inside, it's still going to show through all of that. And then we're not teaching the generations under us anything but to follow in our story. So, what are you doing for the likes? What are you doing for yourself? What are you doing for others? So, I took the first step and I am here to say, I don't need a unit or a wig. I don't need lashes and big hoop earrings. I don't need makeup. Because all it is, yeah, I don't like it anyway. It actually breaks my face out. I'm very comfortable in my bonnet all day long. Now my robe, I'll get kind of hot. So I'll just switch on a shirt. But in all seriousness, We as women have to be okay with learning to love and value ourselves for who we are and not who society says we are. So the next time you find yourself doing something for a like, take a moment and pause and reflect and change that thing. Let's bind together as women. Let's uplift each other. Let's inspire. Let's motivate. You are not in this alone. There are a lot of women that are suffering in silence, that are suffering behind the makeup, the hair, the the clothes, even sometimes the career. But let us be gentle in everything that we do. Let us have a quiet spirit. But most of all, let's be like the women of old 
and put our trust in God. And if you are married, let's accept the authority of our husbands. So, as we always say at this time, keep God first and the rest will be added. This is your story. How will it end?